you've got to get out of here. I'm telling you, you're hotter than jailhouse coffee. Kids are hollering it on the street. They're shouting it over the radio. And you sit here playing crossword puzzles. Take a hint at that. <laughs> it's open season on me. <laughs> they catch me. I want to get out of here. Take a look at this. Why, it's a picture of you. Yeah? Is it? Why, if you had a muff, you'd be the living image of that guy. No, wouldn't I? Elk River. Sounds like a nice, quiet little place. Get the bags tight, Jojo. We're going for a little trip. Now, how's it look? Boss, the only way I'm gonna be able to tell you two guys apart is you ain't tied in a chair. You know, you're not a bad-looking guy. You're not so bad-looking yourself. As much as I disapprove of you. You guys hate yourselves, don't you? Don't be such a snob, Norris. You must admit that I, too, am the number one man in my profession. That's little enough consolation. Now, the next book on crime you write, you have information fresh from the feed box. That is, if you live to write it. You sound like a dime novel crook. Writing character threatening me. Like we're going to have company. Yeah. Hey, comrades, that looks like a very good hideout. Hey, Joseph, get them out of sight. Ooh. Shove them in that closet, and you get in there with them. Go on, hurry up. Right. If he lets a peep out of them, stick it to him. That'd break my heart, boss. He looks so much like you. What does it look like to you? A stick up. We. Oui. You heard me, didn't you? What's the matter with this guy? Is he a dapping? 
Oh, I've seen everything. <laughs> I'm stuck on me. <laughs> oh, this is gonna kill me. <laughs> you said it. Hey, Regan. <laughs> Come out here and get a load of this. Drop those guns off, I said. What's going on around here? Frenchie! Giorgio! She can you be? Frenchie! Mm. Mon ami! Don't get me wrong, boss. Just an old French custom. Do you know this mug? Know him? We graduated together. Class of 1930. Sing Sing. This is uh, Frenchie, my pal. And don't forget our postgraduate course in San Quentin. We've done five years together. <laughs> Just a couple of old roommates, eh? No, not roommates. Inmates. <laughs> eh, they don't. Who is that Frenchie? Him? You don't know him? No. That's Dapper Dan Geary. Him, Dapper Dan Geary? <laughs> oh, monsieur! <laughs> oh, oh, the big, big joke. We oui, stick up Dapper Dan Geary? Oh, that's a fifth. That's enough to kill me. <laughs> Take charge of the report. Right, Sergeant. You all right, Jim? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm a little dirty from dodging bullets. Just think what you'd look like if you hadn't dodged. <laughs> yeah. What's up, McGregor? I ran across Lafarge's gang waylaying a trapper. I got there too late to save the poor fellow. In the exchange of shots, five of them got away. I brought in two of the gangs, sir. I had an idea that Lafarge's gang would drift into our territory. Sit down, Sergeant. Give me headquarters. Did you fight him? Yes, sir. Some papers on him identified him as James Swayze, evidently coming through with some pelts for the market. I left him at the O'Connor cabin. Hello. This is McLeod of the Elks River Station speaking. Yes. Be on the lookout for the Lafarge mob. They got a trapper, and they may be headed for your territory. You've done a good day's work, McGregor. Better knock off. I'll call if I need to. Well, thank you, sir. If you're sure you don't need me, then... <laughs> Probably not half as much as dark. Gosh, it's good to get back here. Why is it the trees seem greener here? Everything's so clean and fresh. Even the sun's more brilliant somehow. <laughs> well, that's the same sun you have down in the States. Why do you have to go and spoil everything? If I want to think the sun's nicer here, let me. All right, all right. Say, how would you like to go out and absorb some of this famous Elks River sunshine? Oh, say, have you met Stephen Norris yet? I read in the papers he was here. Who? Oh, yeah, yeah. You mean the American author? Yes, you know, the man that wrote Flights of Fancy and Public Enemies of the Past? Yes, uh, I met him just once, quite a while ago, up at St. Dam. He seemed very interested in the operation. What sort of a person is he? Oh, he's very pleasant, very friendly. I wish I could meet him. He has such a marvelous mind. Well, let's take a ride up to his cabin. He's invited me, you know. Oh, would you? No sooner said than done. Are you sure it's Norris's mind you admire? He isn't a bad-looking fellow, you know. Neither are you when you're not green-eyed with jealousy. <laughs> well, a man who wouldn't be jealous of you ought to have a tent for a hat. If you don't stop building me up, I'll get the big head. <laughs> now, monsieur, if we could only hide out until the heat is off, I'm sure we can make it up to San Lorenz. So long as people know that Stephen Norris, the famous writer, is living here. That's fine. Now look, I'm Stephen Norris. I'm a little lonely here. I moved down to the inn with my personal ballot. That. Trades people that I'm closing up the house for the season, and you fellas can stay here undercover with plenty of groceries and the constant companionship of my charming, but involuntary host. When I say constant, I mean don't let them out of your sight. 
Well, if I'm going to be a problem child for you fellows, I'll just buy a ticket for New York and go home. I don't want to be in the way, you know. You slay me. Well, as long as it isn't the other way around, I'll find much to be grateful for. Hey, Frenchie, here's the amount of the gut Pierre and Louis. Wait a minute, boys. Put Norris in that closet. Well, here we are. Nursey's horse. Seems to be home. Don't you stoop. You know they get apple saw in this country if they kill a Mountie. Now stay away from that window and stay under cover of you. Come on, get out. Hello, Mr. Norris. We were just coming in to see you. Hello. So remember, we met up at St. Charles. Oh, yes, of course, Sergeant. I'm very glad to see you again. Well, Miss McLeod, uh, may I present Mr. Stephen Norris? Miss McLeod is the inspector's daughter. Uh, how do you do, Miss McLeod? How do you do? I'd uh, like to ask you in, but as a matter of fact, I'm just closing up the cabin for the season. But why? You just came. I find it much too lonely here. Uh, I'm moving down to the end. I should think you'd prefer the quiet while you're working. Yes, but uh, this is a bit too quiet. <laughs> well, if you don't mind, we'll ride down that way with you. Oh, thanks. Thank much. Very nice of you to ride over with me. Oh, no trouble at all. How did you enjoy St. Charles, Mr. Norris? Oh, I thought it was a lovely little village. Village? Mm. Well, I mean the St. Charles Dam. You know, up in the hills where we first met. Oh, yes, of course, the dam. <laughs> dam. A wonderful, great piece of engineering. I've always been interested in writing. What do you consider your best book? Oh, I guess, uh, uh Fancy Flights. I thought you called it Flights of Fancy. Oh, how stupid of me. Of course, that was the original title. Uh, the publishers changed it. You know how they are. Now notice, there ain't no trap doors around me. We just take the king of spades, pass your hand over, and change it to the little ace. There you are. <laughs> ah, that's old. I saw that in New York when I was a kid. I thought you were born in Canada, Frenchie. No, no, no. I was born on the sidewalks of New York. <laughs> well, I gotta beat it over to the hotel and start being a gentleman's man. If you're looking for a new stenographer, Mr. Norris, you don't need to look any further. You know, Miss McLeod here just finished a course in shorthand down in the States. Oh, I'm probably not good enough. Nonsense. You'll suit me perfectly. Report for work in the morning. Oh, Mr. Norris. Thank you very much. I hope I'm up to it. Don't thank me. Thank Sergeant McGregor. It's his idea. I'll see you in the morning. When we love, we have need of confession, of talking or writing, and we either talk or write. Words fly away, those sweet words made of music, air, tenderness, warm and light, which escape as soon as they are uttered, which remain in the memory alone, but which can, one can neither see nor kiss, as one can do by the words written by your hand. Uh, your letters... Uh, uh, make that a question mark, Mr. Cloud. Yes, I am returning them to you, but with what sorrow? In your sensitive and timid soul, you must have regretted having written to a man that you loved him. You remembered sentences that called up recollections and you said to yourself, I will make ashes of those words. Be satisfied. Be calm. Here are your letters. I love you. Gosh, that was beautiful, Mr. Norris. Thank you, Miss McLeod. You may proceed. I'm going into the other room. 
and respect. Gee, boss, you sure had me that time. I didn't know you could write like that. You're a genius. I'm glad to be associated with you. Did you ever hear of a guy named Demopasan? Demopasan? Oh, yeah, Joe Demopasan. That dirty little... I had a run-in with him. He belonged to that stockyards mob in Chicago. Is that the break you mean? Uh, I guess so. What about him? Nothing. Nice guy. He wanted me a big favor. I'll finish typing it at home, sir. That's splendid, Miss McCloud. Oh, by the way, Mr. Norris, I've been telling my dad about you. He'd like very much to meet you. Oh, I'd be delighted. I must go in and see him. I'll tell him to expect you. Good night, Mr. Norris. Good night, Miss McCloud. be long before you be ready. Ready for what? Well, you see, I've been writing my cousin about you. You know my cousin in Milwaukee? Yeah. And he's very much interested. Don't mind him, fellas. Just off on another raid. No, I'm serious. I think I can fix it for you. Fix what? A good steady job as a hog caller. <laughs> McGregor, the inspector wants you to report him first thing in the morning. Pick him up at Falls River. I beg your pardon, Inspector. I, uh... I'm Stephen Norris. Oh, yes. Come right in. I hope I'm not interrupting. Not at all. We were just finishing. I'd like to have you meet Sergeant McGregor. Oh, we've met before. Indeed, we're old friends. Uh, we met up at the uh, uh, St. Charles Dam, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Be to meet you at Falls River. You know him when you see him, don't you? Yes, sir, I do. Then hop to it and bring him through. Sit down, please. Thank you very much. I've been looking forward to meeting you for some time. How's my daughter getting along? Oh, splendidly. You know, I can't begin to tell you how much I enjoyed your book on public enemies of the past. It met with my simple approval. Why don't you write a book on the Canadian Mounted Mars? Not a bad idea. Of course, I don't know much about it. It would need quite a bit of research. Well, this is a good place to come to learn. We'd be very glad to have you. I wouldn't be at all surprised. Of course, you realize it would take quite a bit of knowing. Our system of crime and punishment is different from the American justice. Yes, I know. I've had quite a bit of experience with the American law. I've seen most of the public enemies come and go. You take the recent public enemy, number one. There's nothing I'd like better. And if Dapper Dan Gale was when he's well off, he'll avoid Canada like the plague. Ah, there's a smart boy for you. There isn't a hope of him coming to Canada. He knows when to leave well enough alone. Do you know Dapper Dan Gary? Oh, yes, I know the murderous swine. I wish I could lay my hands on him. One never knows when one may get one's wish. That's right. I'd better run along. 
It's awfully nice knowing you. Drop in any time. Oh. Thank you. I will. <laughs> that guy's a pip. He walks right into the inspector's office and catches some dirt about a payroll coming through. <laughs> the first thing you know, he'll have the inspector out on jobs with him. <laughs> mm. Did you say how much money there was? No, but it must be a good touch. Monthly payroll for the lumber company. Hmm. Every time a lumberjack gets money, he gets drunk. I know. I used to be a lumberjack. And I always promised myself I'd do something about it. Come on, comrades. We got to keep those lumberjacks from getting drunk this month. Yeah, yeah, but uh, what about this guy? Ah, uh, him. Hmm. I've got an idea. Let's put him in the old McIntyre cabin. Nobody will ever find him there. That's good. I'm all for it. I'll get a sack of scrub. All right, Joe, let's go. Hey, is the canoe ready? Don't forget to bring home the bacon. Bring home the bacon? Well, bring home the whole pig. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Go on. Oh. Get going. He was like a kid with a new toy when I told him about that payroll. You told him about the payroll? I got 14 carrot sack. What do you tell him? Where are they? Why, they're on their way up the Fall River. Oh, that's fine, you stupid. Here I find a perfect hideout, and you have to mess it up and get petty lost. There's five grand in that payroll. That's grand lost. Uh, Mr. Cloud, I, I sort of a sick headache. I want to take a nap for a little while. Please see that I'm not disturbed. Would you rather I went home? Oh, no. We'll resume as soon as I awaken. I'm sorry you're not well. I'll see that you're not disturbed. Thank you. Do I turn the bed down, sir? Please. What are you gonna do? You gotta stop those monks. But nobody must know I left this room. So use your head. And that thing is a head. Edward. There is enough grocers for both of you. Keep your eyes on him. All right, boss. Ah, oh, come on. Hello! Me! is not here. I wonder if that mountain... Wait a minute. Why, it's Gary without his mouth.
Now, that's a smart thing to do. This small time stuff will never get you anywhere. Now, you take orders from me and I'll get you a big dough. Come on. right now. You don't he might have come in unnoticed. Why, of course not. Well, it's certainly nice of you to look after my welfare like this. No trouble at all. some old hiking clothes, Sergeant. Well, I'm sorry I bothered you. I guess I'll take a look around outside mine. I hope you get your man, Sergeant. We always do. Move today, Jim. Hiding the money on your hook. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I gave him an extra feed of oats for bolting when they slugged me. If Simpson's detail doesn't locate the Lafarge March. Excuse me. I didn't want to discuss this in front of Dad, but I'd like to know what you were thinking about. There was something a little fishy about our friend, Mr. Norris. For sake, Jim. Why don't you stop reading those detective magazines before your imagination runs away with you completely? Well, it isn't just exactly my imagination. I have an idea buzzing around the back of my head. Well, don't tell anyone about it. Just keep it there. The idea. Suspecting a man like Mr. Norris. You must have forgotten having written to a man that you loved him. You remembered sentences that called up recollections. So. I'll make ashes of those words. Be satisfied. Be calm. Here are your letters. I love you. How did you? It was always good. Even when my favorite author wrote it, Guy de Maupassant. Jim. Coming, sir. That was Simpson. No news. Inspector, I don't know how this is going to strike you, but I'd like your permission to make a check on Stephen Norris. Make a check on Stephen Norris? What are you driving at? Well, there's just something peculiar about him. Well, 
All authors are peculiar, but that doesn't justify us in running the risk of insulting an important man because you don't like his personality. <laughs> I wouldn't take the responsibility of insulting a man like Stephen Norris. Just take a look at that. You'd be right, if it is Stephen Norris. You mean it isn't he? Then who is it? I don't know. <laughs> My boy, you better watch your diet and your step. See you later. My key. His key. Are you going to the masquerade ball, Mr. Norris? I don't know. I haven't quite made up my mind yet. Have the masquerade costumes come from the city yet? Oh, ma'am, we have a beautiful selection. Oh, well, I must go and choose mine. <laughs> I'd advise you to do likewise. We have quite a turnout, you know. Are you going as well, Mr. Regan? I wouldn't miss it for a while. <laughs> I know what you're thinking about, Jojo. But you better keep your hands in your pocket. If you want to keep your hands. Don't worry. I promise you the skin of these hands will never touch them too. I'm just going to turn in. Hey, you. I want to see you. Who snatched those diamonds? I don't know, boss. It must have been that Lafarge mob. You know what this means, don't you? We got to watch our step. Those monies are going to turn this country upside down. And you, you keep away from that Lafarge mob. Oh, boss, listen. I was... All...
Where did the mouse go? I don't know. He disappeared. Ah, he must have got him ill. Hello. Listen, Inspector. I bumped off 40 guys in my time. Some of them my best pals. And one false move out of you and you'll make the 41st. Now get this straight. You gotta get me out of here. I've got places to go, things to see. And anybody that tries to stop me is gonna stop a barrel full of lead. Get on your feet now and do as I tell you. I don't have to remind you that the first wrong move you make is gonna be your last one. Let's go. Where is he? <laughs> He's come to rescue my literary character. <laughs> I guess I must have had a bad dream. Jojo, how dare you carry firearms around me? Here, give me that gun. Ooh, ugly looking thing, isn't it? Well, where's my pipe? Say, boss, you've been smoking an awful lot lately, and it ain't so good for you, especially pipes. I was noticing only yesterday that you're a little yellow around the gills. That's from too much smoking. You think so? Sure I do. Ask Miss McLeod. Don't you think he looks bad? Now you take my advice. If you must smoke, don't smoke a pipe. It's too tough on the bellows. Here, smoke this cigar. Where are you going with that? This, uh, in there. So uh, you won't be tempted. Well, I like to be tempted. Put it back. Hmm. The inspector... The inspector drew himself up to his full height. He, uh... I'm a little bit disturbed, Miss McLeod. I, I'm going for a little walk. You type out what I've just given you and we'll resume when I come back. Now, what's the matter with you? I was looking for a car button. Are you sure you're telling me the truth about those diamonds? So help me, boss. When I told you to skid on my hands, never touch them diamonds, I was telling you the dead level truth. If I ever find out you've lied to me, I'll never believe you again. I won't have to. If you know what I mean. Fine talk. Now I'm going down to the inspector's office to see if there's anything I can learn. I don't like the looks of things around here. Come on now, you knew where they were headed? Come now, where's LaFarge? You're just wasting your time. I got nothing to say. Then, my man, you'll be here for some time. Come along, Sergeant. I want everything in this territory with a roof on. Mr. McGregor, you take charge. And take a good look at your bunks, all of you, because there's not a mother son of you going to sleep until I get the LaFarge gang. Now, seven. Ain't you going to lunch, Miss McLeod? Can't, till the boss gets back. Oh, no, you don't. It's my paperweight. Oh.
Oh, Inspector McLeod? Anybody here? Hello? Tell Inspector McLeod his daughter wants him on the phone right away. He isn't there. Who's speaking? This is one of the new men on duty. You found the diamonds. Don't do anything. Stay right where you are. I'll be over with a couple of men. I uh, just answered the telephone, Inspector. Uh, wrong number. I hope you don't mind me taking it's a liberty. It's quite all right. Sit down. Well, uh, so I, I think I'd better go. I see you're pretty busy. Yes, we're closing in on the fire, uh, Tom. Well, I'll pop in and see you tomorrow. Please do. Uh, I'm quite busy now, though. Give me them jewels. Who did you call on the phone? You'll find out soon enough. Yeah? Gardens on the north range. You three boys take the south. The rest of you come with me. There's no use getting angry. I'll just not make that kind of a deal. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you Vermont and Connecticut Avenue with two public utilities for your boardwalk. And that's my best offer. I've told you for the last time I will not make that kind of a silly deal. All right. I'll make it just one more proposition. Now, there's your board. And there, my friend, is the chair for the boardwalk. Ed, you search the Gamson cabin. You two boys cover the Renault. We'll meet on a big pine road. Not yet. The woods are full of them. We'll row the whole force. They're getting off their horses. Hurry! Find out, Jack. Sergeant, you'll never guess who it is. Come on. Listen, Frenchy, let's get out of here. What are you waiting for? Yeah, I'm getting nervous. Waiting for Reagan and them stones. He should have been here a half hour ago. Come on, let's get moving. I'm seeing too many Mounties. All right. If he doesn't get here within an hour, we'll make a break for it. No, thanks. You know, I don't think you'd kill me if I tried to get that gun. Hmm. Best way for you to find out is to try.
Give me that gun. Come on, we gotta get out of here. This country isn't any too healthy. Come on, give me the jewelry. Give it to me. Come. Go downstairs and get three horses. Is she going with us? You bet. She's our ticket to safety. Oh, I see. Come, my dear. You're going to take a nice little walk, and you're going to pretend to like it. Come on. All right, go on. I do. Is Mr. Norris in? No, sir. He left here a few minutes ago with Miss McLeod. They went for a walk. Hands up, Gary. Well, I'm not Gary. Where's Miss McLeod? I tell you, you're mistaken. And I don't know anything about Miss McLeod. I'm Stephen Norris. Yeah, well, I'm Haile Selassie, too. Now, come on, Gary. There's a man with a long white beard waiting for you. You know, Uncle Sam. Well, I tell you, I'm Stephen Norris. Well, that's great. Now, you just be Stephen Norris, and I'll be Haile Selassie. Come on. You're making mistakes, man. If you're looking for Dr. Dan Gary, get over to my cabin before it's too late. Yeah, well, maybe you are, Norris, but I'm not taking any chances. You're going to stay right here. What again? Follow me!